Glioblastoma is a very aggressive type of brain tumor. Symptoms can be very different depending on which part of the brain the glioblastoma starts. For more information on how symptoms relate to the location of glioblastoma, watch my video on brain anatomy. The most common symptoms of glioblastoma are headaches, difficulty learning or speaking, loss of appetite, mood swings or personality changes, nausea or vomiting, or sometimes loss of balance or trouble walking. Diagnosis of glioblastoma requires first a neurologic exam, including a history as well as a physical exam, almost immediately followed by a CT scan of the head and an MRI of the brain. The only way to diagnose glioblastoma for sure is to get a sample of the tissue, either by biopsy or by removing it directly by surgery. The primary treatment for glioblastoma is surgery. Surgeons attempt to remove as much of the tumor as possible without injuring the normal brain surrounding it. After surgery, patients who are medically fit will undergo radiation therapy with chemotherapy. The typical course of radiation treatment is six weeks, but sometimes in elderly patients, the treatment course is shortened. Some patients who are either too old or too frail or simply too sick to undergo radiation and chemotherapy may not get treatment at all. For those who do undergo radiation and chemotherapy, after completion of that treatment, patients will go on to get several months of chemotherapy alone. In addition to chemotherapy, some patients will also get alternating electric field therapy. Following completion of treatment, patients will follow up very frequently with both their oncologist as well as their radiation oncologist and surgeon. Every two to three months, patients usually undergo an MRI of the brain as well as a physical exam. If an MRI shows that the tumor has grown back, they may be considered for additional surgery or radiation, or perhaps additional medical therapies. Because this is a very aggressive disease and it is difficult to treat, patients may consider clinical trial enrollment. For patients who are not interested in any of these options, palliative care or supportive care to maximize quality of life is usually the best option. This is not medical advice. Talk to your doctor before making any medical decisions.